Tim good to see you. You borrowed your dad's cup. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I suppose so. Good to see him today. He's been racing a bit more this summer, hasn't he? Yeah, he has, yeah. He's, he's been racing. He, he, he loves going racing. Mm. He enjoys watching the racing. Mm. You know, it's, um, he just isn't very mobile. Still walking about, still driving. So he's 94 years young, yeah, he's doing well. Yeah, he's pretty mobile, really. He still keeps using check? Yeah, he's in, in good form, you know. And he still watches it all? Yeah, he, watches it. he goes down on gallops, watches the gallops yeah. every morning. Watches the runners in the afternoon? Yeah, watches the runners, yeah. So he's, um, no, it's really good. Really, really, you know, it's great for us. Goes to mix for Sunday lunch. Yeah, he goes every... sell tickets there. Yeah, I know, <laughs> he goes every Sunday for his lunch. Um, it's a good lunch unless my uncle Mick's cooked it himself, then it's not it's too nuts. good. Yeah. yeah, not as good. Yeah, he reckons to cook where he's not so good. Great vibe around here, and the first thing I'm talking to the kids, real family orientated. You must be proud of the kids. Yeah, we're, we're you know we're, we're lucky because we've all you know I've, I've grown up with it, and they've mm. grown up with it, and they seem to like it. You know, they mm. can do anything they want in the world. You know, they can go farming, they yeah. can go, but they seem to enjoy the crack of it. You know, it's a bit like milking cows at training racehorses. You're there 24 7. You're just to be there. And you, have to you, you have to like it, you know? Yeah, it's a way of life. Yeah, if you don't like it, don't do it. Yeah, I'll start with you and then Sarah. We saw her riding out this morning. Yeah, Sarah. And I know in, in you know, ring of 10 o'clock, it'll be Sarah Anson. Yeah, Sarah, Sarah's, you know, she's, she does all the office and the mm. logistics of all the well horses are all going, bringing owners, you know, here all the time. Mm. And it's uh, we're here Sunday mornings, you know. Um, it's just part of it you know and, uh, and we uh, you know pressure gets on a bit sometimes mm. especially when you're in there till one or two o'clock on a Sunday morning yeah trying to sort things out you know then they got racing Sunday night you know mm. puts pressure on a lot of people uh, and, that's and it's, it's just trying to get the balance you know yeah and that's why you're lucky you've, you've got an advantage where your place has been here for a long time but they've all sort of bought into it I remember the last time we were here with the cameras young Thomas had, had no interest in horse racing at all no, he, Since then, he now wants to be a jump jockey. He's doing well in the flat, and he's mad, mad into it. Yeah, that's right. He, he always, when he went racing, he always he didn't he didn't look like going home till after the last race, which was could be a bit of a pain sometimes, you know. Yeah. But uh, the you know they all like it, you know, and they all have the different ways of liking it, you know. Mm. They all ride. Um, you know, Emily runs one yard. Mm. Uh, Tom uh, William runs one yard, and uh, you know we've got. Um, Stood manager here in some of the yard, mm. and we, you know, it works pretty well, really. William, coming here today, it's the first thing you, it, it's, it's just family, isn't it? You're all bought into it in a big, big way. Yeah, we're really lucky. I mean, it's my granddad started where we stood now, and he was renting this farm, and he sort of built it from there. And yeah. we're lucky that we've got it and a bit of pressure mm. as well to sort of keep it going and mm. do the best we can to do what we can here. And we, we're very lucky, really. You, you walk into the office and you see a picture of your dad, you know, I'm older than you and I remember, but you, you look at what, you know, Night Nurse, Sea Pigeon, two Cheltenham Gold Cups, everything else he won. He set the bar fairly high for you. Oh yeah, he was the only, I think he's still the only trainer to have trained a thousand winners, both codes mm. in the UK, which is some going as well, especially in those mm. days he had, I think, I think he had 60 flat horses and 40 jumpers in the winter and that was sort of, that was him at his most amount of horses. Mm. And trainers now have 200 horses. Yeah. Um, it works well, doesn't it? Um, Emily's in one farm, you're in another across the road. You, you've all got your own department, if you like. Yeah, we're lucky. We, we aren't just in one big yard. We've got four yards. Um, three of them use a flat gallop and another one uses a steep hill gallop. And so, yeah, Emily runs one yard of about 40 boxes. I run another yard of about 40 boxes. And then Dad and there's a couple of assistants, they sort of run the main yard. And then we have a really good fellow called Martin Hill who runs the stud with the hill gallop. So, yeah, yeah we've got a good and then team. that'll work, let's say, yearlings coming in, maybe you want to keep them away from the jumpers at certain points of the year. Horses maybe don't like that, might prefer a different routine. Yeah, exactly. You've got different you've got different yards, sort of slightly different routines. We've got different gallops. So you can really tailor to what suits a horse. Like, they're all individuals. Mm. They like a routine, but it's getting the right routine. Mm. And we, um, so like Emily's got a really good yard that's quite quiet down there. And she has a lot of the older horses that sort of go down there. They might go down there for a break and then she gets them going and she really good attention to detail with those older horses and then where I am we have a lot of two-year-olds and a lot of young horses and that's quite good to get them broken in and do a lot of them messing around with them and that kind of thing and we've I don't know we've got some nice yeah. nice ones like the filly that won this year Rival Radiant she's quite a nice filly yeah. she's over there it, it looks it appears that your dad's good at delegating and you all seem to get on like it's our business it's everything we do it all the time but at the end of the day it's horses it's not 
the be all and end all. It's not the end of the world. Yeah. It's you might argue over a horse for two minutes, but then actually it's after yeah. that it's not the end of the world. You, know? you all want the same results. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, William, the apple didn't fall far from the tree. He's he's keen, isn't he? He yeah. he would like you to probably pack in and disappear today. Wouldn't he he'd love to train himself? Yeah, he would. But you know, we when I started, when I was going to start training, Dad said to me, start, you know, take the license when you want." And yeah. I didn't want to take it too soon. Yeah. Because once you take the license, that's it. Yeah. You know, and, and William knows that, and you know Thomas, Emily, they all mm. understand it, and Sarah. Mm. So it's, uh, but it, you know, it, like in my father's day, there wasn't racing 24/7. Yeah. He used to have jumpers and flat, so it was all the year round. But it's slightly different. Still a lot, bit of pressure, mm. but it was slightly different way of life. You know, you weren't racing Sundays. Mm. You weren't racing Sunday night. Saturday night meetings, there was an odd one, but it's, it all puts pressure on your staff, mm. you know, and your head people, and you mm. all comes down right from the bottom, works all the way up, mm. and it's, you know, they've got to get the, it's hard to get the balance, yeah. but you've got to get it right if you can. What about the riding? You, Emily, young Thomas is coming through, it's been great watching on from afar, it's good rivalry at the minute, Pontefract recently. Thomas finished first, you were second recently. Yeah. Was it Thomas just, first, it, Emily second. Yeah, it's quite good fun really. It's get, it gets people quite quite enjoying it. I think mm. people are watching it all and like it's it's good. Like to, um Tom was just starting out and mm. I know he sort of has aspirations, he quite likes to be a jump jockey, which is a really hard road to take, but he's quite keen on that. And so we were point to point in this winter against each other and then we're riding on the flat, which people probably see a bit more mm. of and it's yeah, it's been uh, it's been quite good. I mean I know Early on with this season pointing, I, I had a winner and Thomas was second. Mm. And I've never had such a poor reception for riding a winner in my life as the fact that <laughs> right. I, I won and Thomas hadn't ridden a winner then, so it was, uh, yeah. Thomas, last time we were here with the cameras five years ago, you had no interest in horse racing. It's changed a bit. Yeah, exactly. It has, yeah. Um, five years ago, I just sort of focused on a lot of sport. I wanted to be play, like a professional cricketer and a rugby player, really. But no, I've got back into it and I have a bit of eventing on the side of racing, so it's all good fun, really. Mm. Um, you rode four winners this summer since getting the licence at, at the time of recording. It's going great, isn't it? Yeah, I've a great run of things at the minute. Um, hopefully it'll uh, last a long time, really. I'm only young, but um, no, it's all good and I'm getting plenty of opportunities thanks to a lot of people. Just Hiss is a perfect horse for you, isn't he? Yeah, he's an absolute star. Um, he's, uh, he's taught me a lot um, so far and at the age of 10 he's still willing, so it's amazing. It, it appears watching on that William would be keen to train one day. You're more into wanting to ride one day, like, you know, ride maybe conditional one day? Yeah, um, I've always got another year at school, so it's all sort of in, in on the road, but it's sort of maybe a long way away. But that's the plan, obviously, uh, at the age of 17. it's I've got it all to come, hopefully. So yeah. it'd be nice to one day, obviously, progress to be a conditional jockey, hopefully. Yeah. Recently, he won a Pontefract, just his, uh, said to him come back in. William was second. Did he say well done pulling up? But apparently he didn't. You ignored him. <laughs> I never, right? No, I never saw him too fair when he came in. But he, uh, no, it was good that. So he fair, just his, his, he's a grand old servant and it, it was good for Thomas and he, mm. he was always travelling well and I was sort of struggling to get to him. Last time we were here, a handful of years ago, Thomas, I believe, had no interest. Remember, you and Emily were mad keen and at the time he was more into other sports and yeah. not the horses. Yeah, when he was a little kid, he just lost a little bit of interest with the horses and then he's come back even keener, really. I mean, yeah. he, as I know, he. he just, it's funny, you just you change what you like. I mean, when I was a little kid, I wanted to be a train driver, but it hasn't really worked out that way. No, but you might be a driver of this place in years to come, won't you? Because it, it appears that when Tim, further down the line, probably a long way down the line, you, you would like the name and the license, is that right? Yeah, I'd like to train one day, obviously. Yeah. And yeah, Dad, like, but I like working with Dad and it's really good and we have a good relationship yeah. and we've got a good team here and things like that. So it's, yeah, I like, I like it as it is. And I, I'll, whenever he sort of feels he doesn't want to do it anymore, that's... I'd like to have a go, yeah. York Ebor meeting round the corner. It's a special place, York, for um, all race scores. A special place for an Easterby. Yeah, really great place. It's, I think I've been around the world, been to different race courses. It's still one of the best race courses in the world. The way that they do everything there, prize money, look after owners, the track itself, everything's absolutely mm. top notch. And to get a runner there is hard enough. From mm. all like, when you're a Yorkshire trainer, we re we really rely on York. Like we have somewhere that people actually come to you you know if someone rings up the phone wants to have a horse or they knock on the door or whatever they say we want to go to york and that's what sells horses sells training in yorkshire mm. and we have we've had some luck there we've had some real success and it takes a really good horse to win there yeah you said it's hard to get runners there you said it's hard to get success there good the sales were what six thousand quid 
by Copper Knight. You've got a plaque outside the way, and it was Ewan Emily bought him, the winning most horse ever at York. Yeah, a he's, bit more luck. he's been an absolute superstar. He's been, he's, he's one of the first, I just started going and looking at some on my own and things like that when I was going to the sales with dad, and he's sort of one of the first ones I bought, and he's been a superstar. And like, hopefully, we'll get him to go there again this mm. year. There's the same race that he won before, and mm. you just never know when he turns up there, he just seems to be a different horse. He looks so relaxed at home. Tell us about him. Yeah, he's only a little horse, and he's got a really, he's got a really great character, and the, so he's always better treated. The girls tend to be better riding him out. He seems to like that. He does what he wants, and then goes out in the field, keep it really straightforward with him. I mean, when he, we haven't really had many issues with him, to be fair. I remember my father was training. He used to have a job to get a runner at York. You know, yeah. we used to do of, often have a job to get runners, and it'll be the same in this big York meeting. You know, it's hard to get them in because the, the 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 bar's gone very high. Yeah. You know, there's there's a lot of competition. Money's great. You know, and it's it's good for racing. Yeah. But we've we've all got to try and keep that bar up if we can, and you know, not just drop out the bottom end with all the low grade racing. You've got to keep the low grade, keep the racing up a bit. I think. You need to buy six grand horses and be the winning moose horse at York. It's easy, isn't it? No. Yeah, I know. William oh. bought Copper Knight. Yeah. You know, and he's been wonderful. I mean, he's. You've uh, told me the story a few times when yeah. he came off the lorry and you're like, this little woolly thing, yeah, what's right. he bought? Six yeah, grand's a lot of money for these yeah, days. Yeah, he, he, he was a little chap. I was a great ass on him, though. You know, but he was, I mean, he'd, you know, he'd raced a fair bit as two-year-old, so we, we uh, chucked him out and mm -hmm. left him alone. And luckily, he's, he's all, everything's come right with him. He's, he's cracking their loss, you know. Chester, York, you know, to have a couple of tracks that you really excel at. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Wonderful, you know. See that plaque outside the... The win for all your your sea pigeons and your winter powers winning Nunthorpe's for for a, a cheap horse to be the winning moose horse bought by your son. Yeah, it's sort of cool, isn't it? It's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. it's great. And he yeah. wants it. He really wants it. He's oh, so yeah. tough. He is. Yeah. You know, he's funny at loss. He get he gets. He might go off the boil a bit. You run him a few times. He gets back down the handicap and then he comes back again. Mm. You know. Interesting horse you could for the convivial richest maiden run in the country. Can't do no more. He just got touched off in a photo there over um, course and distance. That might be a Sort yeah. of blessed in disguise. Yeah, he, he, you know, he's he's the sort of we think we might we might enter there and could run him. Mm. You know, if the ground came really fast, I might not run him. Big horse, lovely horse, great attitude, mm. and he'd go on fast ground. But as a two-year-old, I want to rattle him up on fast ground. You know. Where'd you find him? Uh, well, William and myself bought him at uh, I think William bought him at uh, at Newmarket. He was a French consignment. And now it's a big. William look. Bottom. If yeah. he wins the convivial, it'll be me yeah. and William Bottom, yeah? Yeah, yeah. We, yeah. We, we, you he know, gets beat if he finishes last, William Bottom. Yeah, well, William went round and uh, and bought him afterwards because he wasn't sold through the ring. There was a big heap of people waiting there. I said, let's get him one. And, he, you know, we mm -hmm. bought him, did the deal. But he was a great big horse, you know, he could he could easily have gone to be a, a national hunt horse, you know? Mm -hmm. He'd a nice horse that could have two jobs, you know? Mm -hmm. So, but we'll see. Or power, he sort of breaks the rules, defies the rules the, the other way. He, he doesn't like going local. He likes to get on a boat, head across the RAC. He loves the cur, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. He, he he loves that track. He seems to bounce off it and just spring along. He ran a good race in Doveil. Uh, the ground was just too sticky for him. Just really like he couldn't use his pace, you know. He just got touched off for fourth. But yeah, he did. He, he was he was beaten, well beaten for fourth, and he stayed on right mm. to the line. You know, really went to the line. He's he's so tough and game. He's he don't know he don't know how to get beat. You know. Mm. Aside from that, you handicappers trying to get in. Yeah, we have. Yeah, yeah. We'd cup a night, and we've got let's uh, call Mister Curiosity. Yeah. Who we bought uh, last year. He ran a good race down at Goodwood. He just just didn't get quite get home on that heavy ground. Mm. A mile six. He running the mile and a half race at York. Mm. Very nice horse. He could have a good chance. Gibside at, at a slightly lower level, but he's been progressing nicely. Yeah, he's, he's a in lovely horse. Sea pigeons box. Why is that? Why is he uh, the chosen one? I don't know. He just happened to get there. Yeah, you know, uh, it's uh, he's a nice horse. I mean, he'll go on. You know. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's good for us to, to come here and see Sea Pigeon like nurse. Tell us, tell us your memories. You, you used to ride him out, didn't you? Yeah, I used, to ride, I used to ride Sea Pigeon out. When he came, he was very, very strong, very keen. Matt Birch did all the work settling him. Yeah. You just you have to drop him on one's girth on the gallop, sit his head and his nose right on his girth mm. around the gallop, and he used to drop him on it and, and he used to settle then. Mm. Couldn't move on him, you had to sit on him, very quiet. 
And he's, a, he's a, the most wonderful feel he gives you, you know, he's like electric, you know. Mm. So he was, yeah, he was in that box all his life and he used to go in the paddock every day. Yeah. Uh, and he'd, uh, they'd turn him out every morning, come in at lunchtime, and he, he worked with him, you know. Yeah. So he, we try and mirror it if we can. Do you remember Ebor Day? Absolutely. I do remember it really well. We thought he got B on the line. Yeah. Yeah, Danny Gold Prince, uh, Philip Robinson. Yeah. Nearly beat him on the line. Yeah. Absolutely, it was so close. John Joe thought he'd won, eased up a bit. Yeah. And uh, anyway, he won, that was great. Mm. Um, you've him, Night Nurse, at Lau, Alberton. Alberton. Yeah. Cy Brandon, I remember as a, yeah, as a yeah. kid. Yeah, wonderful losses. You know, uh, uh, hopefully we'll get him back again. You know, we'd love to win, it, win a champion hurdle one day, but yeah. you know, you'd get the horse to win it. Barton, you won a Sun Alliance yeah, with him. Turgenev was, was a good. He was a wonderful horse, that. Barton. You know, I mean, if ever there was a good thing, it was him, and he was right from the word go his favourite for that race. And, mm. You know, he, he was a great horse, but he. Did he stand out, Barton, at home? It's just been Yeah, different. absolutely. Different yeah. class. Canter up the gallop, you could see he was different class. Mm. Worked a few uh, other jumpers with him, he'd break the hats, so we used right. to work him on his own in the end. Yeah. And, uh, and then with had, had and Erica won the ledger. Pippa Long. Yeah, Pippa Long with some wonderful Flanders. Great, you know. And we yeah. still have some really nice horses to come, you know. Yeah, and you've some of them old pedigrees, you know, Bob and Margaret, and yeah. you know, they've served you for decades now. Yeah, they're, they're, you know, and, and they, they keep popping a good now, you know. Mm. Yeah, good good handicappers, win races, win lots of races. And, and you know, those those good breeds, they, they do breed you good in some way. Mm. Uh, Winter Power, obviously, you got, you got sent her. Yeah. Um, that season when she won, you know, obviously she didn't train on or whatever, but she was electric. Yeah, what about that, Nunthorpe? Tell us about that. Um, well, it was pretty special, really, because, mm. you know, I mean, she was so good. And she had a, a big backside and a big second thigh and, a, and, a, and just an average walk, you know, but not the best walker, but really good go, you know, good type. And we thought she was really good as a two year old. And uh, she took us a long time to win with her. Mm. She just was, she was just did too much a couple of times in the race and just didn't get it together, you know, you wouldn't believe. And then she got it together late, late two-year-old, won mm. a nursery and then she won the Cornwallis and she was wonderful. And then as a three-year-old, um, she did well, but then we got her ready for the Nunthorpe, basically. Yeah. And she won it. And she just didn't really train on after that. Yeah. I don't know why, for what reason. Um, she just put she, that much into that season. No, I don't know what it was. She she didn't just move the same right. the next year. Didn't just Duran used to ride out every day. Yeah. Uh, John Fentiman. Yeah, and she didn't go the same. Can't tell you why, what, for what reason. No idea. Mm. Just didn't go the same. Come out the stalls, didn't go. Mm. Uh, driving out of York that day, how, how important was it? You know, York's in your doorstep is so important. What, what about Leicester leave? Yeah. When are Leicester leave the track? Yeah. So, you know, I just remember leaving York. Yeah. It was quite a real good day. It was, uh, we'd enjoyed it. Born in 2006, so a lot of these old horses are just pictures on the wall, even Bartons, etc. What was your first childhood memory of around here? Uh, good horse wise. Good horse wise. Oh, um, Apart from Juice Hiss. <laughs> uh, obviously, we've had a lot over the time. Um, my first proper sort of it's probably a bit later on, but uh, Wells Fargo was yeah. obviously a very big... I obviously went and watched him down at Newmarket, and uh, I was actually... I didn't go and watch him when he won the Aiken, but I was at a friend's house, and I remember getting the f getting called up on my first phone. It was a Nokia, and it could barely work, and I got called up. They were like, we're going out for tea. He's won the Aiken, so it was a really, really nice thing. And, um, yeah, he was probably one of my first ever memories, really. Winter Power, obviously, you remember well. Nunthorpe, Sea Pigeon, you're too young to remember. What's your favourite York memory, quick? Um, I think actually it was Wells Fargo when he got up on the line to win the Acom. I remember I stood with Dad and he, uh, he just got up and we both said, ah, we were like, glad he ran well. And we were like, oh, we've got beat. Mm. And we're walking around the back of the stand and then they announced him the winner and we couldn't believe mm. it. We were absolutely thrilled. That was a really, really good win. It's a special place when we're talking about Sea Pigeon, Winter Power, Williams Road winners and, and amateur race there. Wells Fargo won the Acom there. Yeah. If I had said to you quickly, favourite ever day at York, best memory, what would it be? Sea Pigeon. Still. And maybe, well, it had to be the Nunthorpe, really. Mm. You know, I mean, Sea Pigeon. You're only allowed one. Yeah, well, 
I suppose myself really winter power, really. But you know, sea pigeons up there. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Before we go, before we go, we need to speak to the main man himself. How are you doing? Oh, struggling on. Struggling on. If you're struggling, there's no hope for the rest of us. Uh, no. You're off out for dinner with Mick. Yeah. Who's paying? Oh, we, toss, we only toss it up. Toss a coin, yeah. Yeah. We never fall out about money, Mick ne and me. Never. But he, he's hungry for it now, as well. So. Who's got more? Hey, I think he's got more. You think he has? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Uh, he's still cooking your Sunday lunch. Sorry. You still go Sunday lunch? Yeah. Ever? Sunday lunch. Yeah. Once a week. Mm. Yeah. Um, they're doing well here, aren't they? Tim and the, the grandkids. Yeah. They're, they're having a good run, aren't they? You must be proud of the grandkids. They're really yeah. coming through, aren't they? Oh, hi. Well, you they got it, they haven't got it. Yeah. It. They bred into them. Yeah. Came from you. Yeah. Um, we're looking at them sea pigeons, night nurses, yeah. Alverton, yeah. Little Owl. Some CV, there. yeah. <laughs> Some achievement, isn't it? A thousand winners over jumps, well, thousand winners in the flat. Yeah. They were good horses, like. Mm. Just what they steered right. What, what was your memory? Sea pigeon was a bit more quirky, wasn't he? Need a bit was, more. Yeah. Absolutely. He was a bit more <coughs> class. You yeah. know? And Night Nurse was a, just an out and out galloper. Paddy Broderick but, used to just jump and away with him. There was nobody giving Paddy out any orders. He never, never ever listened. He just done what he wanted. He needed like done... Yeah. And it, it worked out anyway. Mm. Yeah. Um, and Sea Pigeon, obviously, to champion hurdles to, to win an Ebor. Yeah. At York, it must have been very special. Absolutely. There was no ca the, the pity was, there were no cameras. Yeah. Nothing. No, I know. But on the day, didn't you think he's got beat in the food of finish? Eh? A lot of people thought he got beat in the food of finish. Uh, my heart stopped. Yeah. Anyway, it stopped. went again quick. Yeah. When they announced it, it was a big, big roar mm. from, from, the, from the public. For all your, I mentioned Cheltenham successes, York's a special place for you, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. Mm. Oh, really, yeah. Favourite track? I wouldn't say favourite track, I said no. I think my favourite track was Ripon. Ripon? It was always kind to us, I don't know why. Mm. But it doesn't matter what, which track it was anyway. Mm. Winner's a winner. Yeah, winner's a winner, yeah. And it was kind to you, you've been kind to, to racing. Yeah. Great to see you, enjoy your lunch. Yeah. All right, boys. Watch live racing now on racingtv.com.